Super NES took everything the original NES could do and beefed it up. It had more memory, a bigger color palette, it had moving backgrounds, animated weather overlays, and Mode 7 graphics. Simply put, the SNES was solid gold, and right at the start of its fabled run was a Mario game. Super Mario World. The Mario Brothers and Princess Peach have gone on vacation to Dinosaur Land after they kicked Bowser's sorry butt at the end of SMB3. But when the plucky plumbers have their backs turned, the Koopa King naps the princess again. Time for a new quest! SMW retains the tried and true 2D Mario mechanics of the NES games, and like its predecessor, builds upon them. Whereas you can pick up and throw items with SMD3, you can also throw them upward. You have a spin jump, which is useful for getting past dangerous obstacles, but it's not optimal unless you have a power-up. If you have one, you can buff through blocks and one-shot enemies. Speaking of power-ups, the huge arsenal from SMB3, it's gone. Only the SMB1 items remain. But there's two things that make up for it. First, the Cape Feather, which turns you into Cape Mario. Cape Mario is basically Raccoon Mario Mark II. You can spin to knock out enemies, you can take to the air, ascend slowly, and even create a shockwave to take out enemies touching the ground. Secondly, the game's most important contribution, Yoshi. Not only can you ride him around, he can eat small enemies in one bite. Whatever he can't swallow, he just holds in his mouth. These would include Koopa shells. If Yoshi eats a shell, he can do one of four things depending on its color. Green shells are just spat back out. Red shells are turned to fireballs. Yellow shells cause shockwaves when Yoshi lands from the jump. Blue shells allow Yoshi to fly. Yoshi also serves as an extra hit. If an enemy touches you, you automatically dismount and he runs off scared. But you can still get back on him. Eventually you'll come across red, blue, and yellow Yoshis. These are the abilities that correspond to their respective color, regardless of whatever shells in their mouth. But even if you have a Yoshi, you can't take it into a building. It's also worth noting that if you get another power-up while already Fire or Cape Mario, the previously held item will go into the reserve box at the top of the screen. If you take a hit, the item is released, and you can grab it. Of course, you can manually change them if there's a need. Remember how in SMB3 you had skippable levels? This time, you have multiple paths. Yellow levels have only one exit, while red ones have two. Commonly, you beat a stage by passing a gold post. If you can break the tape, you'll be awarded bonus points. For every 100 bonus points, you'll go into a mini game where you can earn extra lives. Secret exits can be either a hidden goal or a magic keyhole. These can open up hidden levels, portals to Star World, more on that later and occasionally Switch Palaces. There are four Switch Palaces in the game. Beating them will allow for colored blocks to be filled in, making necessary platforms. As a kid, it took me forever to figure out how to get to Soda Lake. Watching my cousins beat Cheese Bridge and seeing that arrow sign behind the main goal made me think it was just for decoration. But, you know, that you were leaving. Little did I know it was a subtle hint. You're supposed to get to the goal with Yoshi, float under it, jump off of Yoshi when you pass it, and run to the right. Boom. It was also a pain to get to this one keyhole in the final ghost house back in the day. I just couldn't get the trail of coins to line up right. Nowadays, it's no problem. On the subject of ghost houses, they serve as puzzle stages and tend to have a secret exit, save for the ones with the little dome and chocolate island. The Star World levels are another variant. The only way you can progress there is to find the keyhole. 
for me, one of the biggest drawbacks to the game is the bosses. They're pathetically easy. But if you want hard, go to Special World. After being Star World, you'll reach the home of the eight hardest levels in the game. The ice and kamikaze cheap cheeps and awesome, the bouncing fires and foreground graphics and outrageous, but Tubular takes the cake. Many a veteran of this game can tell stories about this nightmare. The charging chucks, the yawning pit, the one-hit death pea balloon Marios. When I was a kid, I always got Cape Mario and a Blue Yoshi and tried to survive until I got to a Koopa I could eat. If you can beat the special world, the maps will be given on colors and certain enemy sprites will be changed. This leads us into another facet. In terms of the enemy roster, new introductions include the aforementioned Charging Chucks, Bonsai Bills, Rexes, Super Koopas, Flower Loving Wigglers, and two Hammer Brothers variants, Sumo Brothers, and Amazing Flying Hammer Brothers. Goombas aren't in this game, but stand ins called Galoombas were given the name through a translation error. Jumping on them just knocks them over, which hurts the comparison anyway. But guess what enemies did get into the game? When it's time to go after Bowser, you can select which rooms you can go through by way of number doors. A feature reference to future Mario albums, and we'll get to some of those at a later point. Of course, if you unlock back door, you can skip these doors completely and go to the final corridor. Bowser attacks with a flying clown machine, and you have to hit him with metal creeping until he throws the tower. Drops Peach, spins off into the dark, and congratulations, you beat the game. When SMW came out, critics thought it was just a pretty rehash of SMB3 that was doomed to obscurity. Oh, how wrong they were. SMW sold 20 million copies and has repeatedly graced best games of all time lists. Even today, it's not only considered one of the best SNES games ever, but a contender for best Mario game ever. And keep in mind, this was a launch title. While professional critics were pish-poshing SMW at the time, Sega took the game seriously and made their own game to counter it. Sonic the Hedgehog 